Hello Minions, Wheezy here, and today I'm going to talk to you all about the SPR-208 Marksman Rifle in Modern Warfare and how you can use this quick scoping machine to have a lot of fun and to do as well as you possibly can. So come check it out. So to start, my overall impressions of the SPR are that it is an absolute blast to use. Uh, I'm not much of a sniper and not much of a quick scoper, and the builds on this gun just made it so much fun to use. I highly recommend you give it a try. So let's walk through uh, the strengths, weaknesses, and everything about this weapon and see if it's uh, if it's something you want to put in your arsenal. So let's get right into the strengths of the SPR. The first is that it has an extremely fast ADS for a sniper rifle. Um, and I'm probably going to refer to it intermittently between sniper rifle and marksman rifle because it plays like a sniper even though it's in the marksman rifle category. And all that really does is make it so that it has a lot of fun attachments to use for essentially quick scoping. So it's got a really fast ADS. Uh, it's also got a great one hit kill to the upper chest and head at close to medium range just by default. And then when you use the ammo upgrades and some of the attachments, the one hit kill to the upper chest and the head actually extends further out to long range and it just makes this gun unfair to use, but also way, way too much fun. Um, because it's in the marksman rifle category, it has a wide variety of possible builds, so you can build it out as a relatively traditional sniper rifle. But what I preferred and what I think you'll enjoy most is building it more out as a quick scoping one hit kill machine. And it is just overall extremely fun to play with. I think if you use some of these builds and some of the tactics I'm going to outline for you, you're just going to absolutely love this gun. And if you've been playing Modern Warfare in Season 6, I'm sure you've probably already been seen it, seen it being used all over the place. And there's a reason for that. So let's get into the weaknesses. So the weaknesses of the SPR are very minor. The first is that since it's bolt action, the follow-up shots are slow versus a semi-automatic rifle or obviously an automatic weapon. Um, that said, it has a relatively fast cycle rate for a bolt action and there is an attachment that will increase that cycle rate further, which we'll get to in our builds. Um, the other weakness of the rip rifle is that unlike some other sniper rifles, the one hit kill positioning for the shots requires a little bit more accuracy. You do kind of have to hit mid to upper torso and head to get a one hit kill out of it. So you will get some hit markers and make sure that you have to take a little bit of extra time to get that, that good center mass shot or head shot in order to get the one hit kill. But I think you'll see that overall those are very minor weaknesses compared to how effective this gun is. Now let's talk about engagement and map movement with the SPR. Like I said, this can be built as a traditional sniper rifle and we'll address that, but primarily I'm going to be talking about builds, high mobility builds for using this as a quick scoping or no scoping, not hip fire no scoping, but iron sights uh, no scoping marksman rifle. So. If you keep moving with this weapon, it's not going to be the kind of weapon that you want to sit down and take pot shots with just because it doesn't actually have exceptional range in general. And there are a lot of weapons, including assault rifles and proper sniper rifles, that are just going to outclass you at longer range. You really want to be playing this mostly as a close to medium range weapon. And what I mean by that is your builds will focus around engaging people almost like a shotgun. So that's the most fun that I had using this weapon and the most success that I had were using either iron sights or a low magnification red dot sight. Um, some of my clips you'll see I was using scout optics uh, and stuff like that. That was to complete challenges. I wouldn't necessarily recommend those as a primary go-to. But it does increase your visibility at longer range. But Again, I think you're going to want to focus on keeping this as a close range weapon. So we want to focus on moving and on 
making sure that when we take shots that we're taking that extra half a beat or whatever it takes to make sure that we're not going to wing an arm or a leg and that we're going to get a center mass or head shot because if you come up against either another SPR, which has been really common in the early part of Season 6, or assault rifles or shotguns or pretty much any other weapon that's not a slower bolt-action mar marksman rifle, um, you are not really going to get another chance at a follow-up shot. But if you make sure that you take that other quarter of a second, little half heartbeat to make sure you land that shot, you are going to get one-hit kills and you are going to put together streaks that are going to be fun and just... Frustrating for the other team. I'm on the other side of the SPR a lot, and it's an, I, you, you guys, if you've been around a while, you know in general I'm not a huge fan of one-hit kill weapons. Uh, but while it's here, and if you build it properly, it can be quite a bit of fun. Okay, so when should you disengage with the SPR? This is an effective weapon, and it can at times feel, maybe overpowered is not the right word, but since it's a one-hit kill, it can feel pretty bad on the receiving end to just have someone come around a corner and delete you in a fraction of a second. As the user, when do we want to disengage from fights? Um, between shots, if you have access to cover. If you don't get that one-hit kill while the bolt is cycling, if you're near a wall or a box or some piece of cover you can get behind that's between you and the enemy, Use cover while you cycle the bolt. Standing out in the open and waiting for your chance to get your next shot is a good way to get melted by someone's AR, SMG, or their SPR if they were slower on the trigger than you are. Also, if you're using the close quarters build, which I would recommend, when you're at longer ranges, you're going to want to disengage if the enemy starts shooting back. Because this thing isn't great at long range, just in general, uh, if you are getting shot back at, it's best to disengage and move to another location. I wouldn't re-peek. This gun isn't powerful enough or accurate enough to really be a force at re-peeking at long range. So if you're at long range, your enemy sees you, starts shooting back, go to another location and either re-engage or just move on to a different enemy. And finally, even at medium range, if you start taking damage and you don't get melted immediately, also, you want to disengage. So you could try and push some of these fights uh, to get a follow-up shot and try and beat someone at medium range, but especially once you start taking damage and it, against most weapons that have a faster fire rate than you, you're gonna you're gonna probably lose those more often than you win them. So it's better to, if you start getting damaged, try and get away, let yourself heal up, re-engage from a different angle, or try to bait them in a little bit closer so that you have a better chance at getting that one hit kill, quick scope, super duper awesome shot. So briefly I want to discuss the early on season 6 elephant in the room with the SPR and that is the Warzone version of it. Uh, it applies to multiplayer and ground war as well, but when you put on the higher caliber ammo conversions like the Lapua rounds or the Norma Magnum rounds, this gun does become hit scan, which appears to be a bug right now, which will most likely be patched. In fact, there's a rumor that that patch will be probably dropping as I'm recording this video. So I have set up this video and my review of this weapon is based on the things that I don't think are going to change. I don't think they're going to nerf the aim down sight speed. I don't think they're going to nerf the one hit kill parts of the body because those fundamentally aren't really overpowered. Um, they do require a little deliberation and skill. In Warzone especially, and maybe in Ground War, I haven't played with it as much, the fact that there is no travel time on the higher ammunition, uh, higher ammunition attachments uh, makes it a little ridiculous. You just click on people's heads and they die. Um, that's not how I've been using it. You'll you'll be able to see other people talking about that, but I think that's going to get nerfed anyway. So just to address that, uh, that doesn't impact the suggestions that I'm making for how you should build and play this weapon. So let's talk about loadouts. And for the SPR, I have, I believe, four builds. I've filled up my custom uh, gunsmith builds for this one uh, and each one has its own purpose so the first one I'm going to show you is what I call iron snipes which is kind of the base uh, build for this weapon and what it does is it emphasizes aim down sight speed so uh, for the attachments I have the 
faster aim down sight speed barrel. Now this is something I don't normally do with a weapon. It's gonna reduce your recoil control, bullet velocity. So in the pursuit of aim down sight speed with this, this is actually going to make the gun less accurate and even have less range to an extent. Um, but because like I said, we're gonna be trying to use this mostly at close and medium range in multiplayer, that's not really gonna be an issue for us. So we're using the ZLR ASP barrel for faster aim down sight speed. We're skipping the optic here. I have another build that's gonna have an optic on it. Um, and for the stock, we're using the SP TAC 208 Ultimate stock. It increases aim down sight speed and aiming stability. The Blitz also increases aim down sight speed, but it also increases sprint to fire speed, which is something we would like. I used this for a while and what I found was that the decrease in aiming stability actually caused me an issue with hitting my shots more reliably. So the ultimate, the TAC 208 ultimate I found allowed me to land my shots more consistently and still gave me a boost to aim down sight speed. Uh, sleight of hand, because we're going to go ahead and use the Lapua Magnum uh, rounds for the increased damage range and increased damage, this actually does increase I believe. Um, the parts of the body where you can, as one of my computers goes nuts, um, the parts of the body where you can uh, get a one hit kill, I believe it extends it lower down in the torso, almost to the crotch, where you can still get a one hit kill. Uh, sleight of hand, especially if you're going to be using this weapon effectively and putting together some streaks, which I have found you absolutely can do, uh, sleight of hand is going to be a great way to rapidly switch your magazines when you run out of those five, uh, those five rounds. And I'm using the feather bolt to increase rechamber speed, especially with the iron sight free version, we're going to be up close and dirty. And so we want to make sure that we can cycle the bolt on this weapon as quickly as possible, follow up shots, reload quickly. This is an aggressive weapon, one hit kill machine, and it is a lot of fun to use. So that is my iron snipes build. Let us go ahead and switch over to the next one up the ladder, which I call Leet Snipes, because this is all tongue in cheek because this gun is a little ridiculous. Um, so again, we're sticking with the ZLR ASP barrel for the increased aim down sight speed. This time we're gonna throw an optic on it. Um, I was using this for a challenge. I would not in general uh, recommend the Merc Thermal Optic. Matter of fact, I would go with my good old tried and true GI Mini Reflex. Uh, if you wanna stretch it out closer to medium range, you might use a holographic or even a scout scope, but those are gonna slow down your aim down sight speed. So the optic helps with precision, which is important. Um, but you're going to want to use something that doesn't massively decrease your aim down sight speed. Same stock as before for the same reasons, sticking with sleight of hand and the Lapua rounds. So what we did is exchanged the optic for this faster bolt cycling. And the reason being on this is this is going to be a little bit more medium or longer range because we're trying to add that extra precision with the optic. So we're less likely to require those as fast as possible follow-up shots that you might need if you're really at close range. And the next build I'm gonna show you is the Snipey Snipes, and this is for multiplayer. Uh, and I would use this just to try and build this as a general sniper rifle. Now, the Solo Zero 28 millimeter scope only has seven times magnification. So this is relatively mo low magnification versus most sniper rifles in the game. Um, that's obviously intentional, a balancing thing for this weapon. And so, but it's, but it's more than enough for multiplayer. I don't play a whole lot of ground war, but it would be good for ground war as well. Um, this is a good sniper rifle for traditional multiplayer. Same, uh, using the ultimate stock for the same aim down spite, sight benefits without losing our aiming stability. This time we're switching to the longer barrel. Again, we're using this as a sniper weapon. So the increased bullet velocity, damage range, uh, recoil control. These are things that are advantageous when we're engaging from longer range. Um, and keep in mind, I talk about bullet velocity. Right now, with the Lopua Magnum rounds, it's hit scan. I believe that's going to change, in which case this build is going to work well for a bullet that acts the way it's supposed to. And then the Monolithic Suppressor, because again, increases our damage range and it keeps us off the radar. Um, when you're acting as an actual sniper, it's best not to broadcast your position all over the radar. So this would be my build for 
sniping. Um, I have found that this build actually works well um, because of the overall fast aim down sight speed of the SPR in general. You can play this pretty aggressively as well. Um, it plays very similar to a faster uh, build you would build with like the HDR. So this is a build for longer range sniping but it also can be effective at close and medium range. Uh, so I, I had fun with that as well. Um, the last build I'm gonna show you is, would be a Warzone build. I haven't used much, uh, I haven't used this in Warzone, but if you're gonna build it for Warzone and not take into account the fact that it's hit scan right now, I think this is the build that you would want. Monolithic Suppressor for the same reasons as multiplayer, and even more ubiquitous in Warzone. The longer barrel, this gives you maximum damage range, which is what you want. The optic, you can use the uh, variable zoom optic, which does have slightly higher magnification, um, but I don't think you're really gonna to wanna to be using it at the lower magnification, so you might as well just go ahead and not have to dick with it. Use the 7x magnification. Lapua rounds, again, maximum damage and velocity. If we take out of the out of the picture the fact that this is hit scan right now, I think that's gonna change. This will be your, your best ammunition at range, and I think it'll make this thing behave like a car 98K does once it's fixed. And then the TAC laser for Warzone, because of the ranges you're using, I don't like lasers in multiplayer. Um, another computer beep. Um, I don't like lasers in multiplayer, but in Warzone, they are less of an issue. You're not gonna really be giving away your position at close range uh, in Warzone the way you would in multiplayer. So uh, the TAC laser gives you the fast aim down sight speed, aiming stability, and aim walking steadiness. So this overall just completely adds a lot of bonuses to your weapon. The only downside being the laser visibility, which like I said, in Warzone, for a longer range weapon is basically a non-issue. So those are my four builds uh, for the SPR. My favorite, I think, has to be Iron Snipes just because of how much fun it is to use at close range. Um, it'll be worth playing around with. Uh, I've been doing this on my Weapons Tactics videos recently. Um, I take these loadouts and I'm putting screenshots and breakdowns of them on the website in case you don't want to have to refer back to this video to get access to them. You can go to the website and you can download those images so you can save them and refer back to them when you're trying to create your builds on your own. Um, so be sure to check out wheeziesgaming.com. Uh, the link to this post will be in the description below um, so that you can see those breakdowns and get a, you know, if you're like me, sometimes it's easier to get a reference to this stuff in text versus watching a, a longer video. So uh, be sure to check that out. Well, minions, that concludes my Wheezy's Weapon Tactics video for the SPR-208. I think if you try these loadouts and use the techniques that I've given you for how to play with this weapon, I think you're going to just have a ton of fun using it. Like I said earlier, you're probably already a little frustrated with how ubiquitous it is across multiplayer right now um, because it's easy, relatively easy to use, but also very fun to use. So with a one-hit kill weapon like this, um, it does require some skill to consistently get one-hit kills, Bad players still get lucky, and that's probably the most frustrating way for weapons like this to work. But if you do what I've talked about, take that little extra heartbeat to make sure you get those one-hit kills, you are going to string together some really fun streaks, and uh, I think overall you're just going to really have a blast using this rifle. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, if you want more like this and you're not already subscribed to the channel, come on and stick around. If you want to get earlier notification to this or have some input or talk to me about what kind of stuff you want to see or get a chance to play with me online, join my Discord. The link is uh, in the description for that below. Um, it's a great place to, to get more access and, and I'm always looking for people to play with. So um, be sure to check out the Discord, check out my website, wheezysgaming.com and be sure to subscribe here so that you get my videos when they come out. So hope you guys enjoyed again and I will talk to you later. Goodbye.